Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be doing one example of a limiting reactant problem. In this problem, the goal is to determine the limiting reactant if 79.1 grams of zinc reacts with 163.1 grams of hydrogen fluoride. The reaction is balanced right here, where I have a, a, a one mole of zinc to two moles of hydrogen fluoride. We'll react to form zinc fluoride with uh, one mole and also one mole of hydrogen. Okay guys, so it's a standard limiting reactant problem and the way we're going to set this problem up is we're going to identify the givens. We have 79.1 grams of zinc and it's going to react with 163.1 grams of hydrogen fluoride. Okay, now here's the thing. When we're looking at the limiting reactant, the question is really which one of these two reactants will be used up first in the reaction? Like I'm mixing these guys together, one of them is going to run out. Whichever one runs out first is called the limiting reactant because it limits the amount of zinc fluoride or hydrogen I can make. Because it limits the amount of product I can make, we're going to choose one of these two products to end our problem at. And for me, it's just a little easier to end the problem at H2 just because it's a very easy uh, molar mass. So the problem is going to end here, guys. How many grams of H2 will both of these reactants make? And whichever one of these reactants makes the least amount of hydrogen, that will be called my limiting reactant. Okay, so what we're going to do is set up a, a stoichiometry problem where I have 79.1 grams of zinc. And I'm also going to list the second reactant, 163.1 grams of hydrogen fluoride. Now, I'm going to set these problems up, and they're both going to end at the same place. I want to find out how many grams of H2 will each one of those individually produce. I'm going to use stoichiometry to get me the answer. Okay, so let's set the problem up. I like to write the ending first. I call them the two givens. So let's go over here to grams of H2. And this problem will also terminate at grams of H2. Now, one thing we should be in the habit of doing by now is drawing grams of H2 right there, as well as grams of H2 right there. And that's going to be from the periodic table, each hydrogen on the periodic table, each hydrogen weighs 1. And I have two of them, so the weight of H2 is going to be 1 plus 1. I'm going to have 2 grams of hydrogen per 1 mole of hydrogen. Let's write that again. We'll cut up 2.0. Excellent, guys. Okay, so from this point, actually, we're going to go back to the beginning of the problem and work out our stoichiometry problem, but it's a really good idea for us to always list where we're going to at the end and then bookend it with uh, right here. Write the same exact unit and the conversion factor for it. All right, let's break it apart. Let's convert zinc into moles. One mole of zinc is going to have a molar mass of 65.4 and that comes from the periodic table. The next step here is going to be the mole ratio. Okay, because zinc appears on top, we're going to cancel that with moles of zinc on the bottom. Now I want to convert from zinc to hydrogen. Alright, so I'm going from zinc over here and zinc has a coefficient of 1, we're going to put that there, and hydrogen, which we are converting into, also has a coefficient of 1 as well. So we're going to write that there. And as you see, the grams of zinc cancels out with grams of zinc. Mole of zinc cancels out with mole of zinc. This is our key step here. We convert from zinc into hydrogen. Mole of hydrogen on top will cancel out with mole of hydrogen down the bottom. And lastly, grams of H2 will match grams of H2. So when I plug this in and I calculate it, I find out that I need 2.5. 4.2 grams of H2 will be produced by 79.1 grams of zinc. Okay, now here's the thing. We also have to do this problem down here. We need to take 163.1 grams of hydrogen fluoride and convert that to H2 as well. Let's do it. We already have the ending, so let's start at the beginning here. That's going to be one mole of hydrogen fluoride, and that's going to have the mass of hydrogen Hydrogen has a mass of 1. Fluorine has the mass of 19 on the periodic table to give us a total mass of 20. So we're going to have 20 grams in 
one mole of HF. And now our key step, let's leave behind hydrogen fluoride. Hydrogen fluoride has a, a two in front of it, so that's going to be two moles of hydrogen fluoride for every, let's go, now we're going to HF, one mole of HF. And when we multiply all this out, we're going to find out that I have 8.155 grams of H2 that can be produced. So here's the thing, guys. Using stoichiometry, we can say that if I have 79.1 grams of zinc, I should be able to produce at a maximum 2.42 grams of H2. Likewise, if I have 163.1 grams of HF, I can produce a maximum of 8.155 grams of HF. And so it's kind of clear that this right here is a lower number. I can only produce 2.42 grams of H2. The second that's all produced, I run out of zinc. Okay, so once zinc is run out, the only thing I will produce is 2.42 grams of H2. So zinc, therefore, is known as my limiting reactant. And that will make hydrogen fluoride my excess reactant. Okay, once again, once the reaction produces 2.42 grams of hydrogen, the reaction's over. Okay, so that, what that means is that hydrogen fluoride does not have the possibility of producing all of this because it needs zinc in order to do that, and zinc will run itself out. All right, guys, that's just a quick example on how to determine the limiting reactant given an equation with two reactants. Okay, hope it was helpful. Tune in again later.